I'm Chris from the Silver Symbol Channel and in today's video we're going to be talking about this outlet. Now two years ago they said that making one of these was impossible. Inside this outlet is a full 60 watt USB charger. USB chargers have been around for a number of years but they're always going to be either 10, 15 or 30 watt versions. The problem starts with this. Here's a 60 watt USB charger and you can see it's pretty good sized. But now try to combine that inside an electric outlet like this and you can see the problem is twofold. First of course is physical space. The bigger issue is the heat that gets generated by one of these chargers. Of course, if you've ever unplugged one from the wall, you know these things can get really warm. But when you put it inside an electrical box, that becomes a much bigger issue. If it should overheat, you could potentially cause a fire. And that's what made this the impossible outlet to manufacture. Now, why on earth would you even want to use one of these in-wall chargers? Just use the brick that comes with your device. Oftentimes, you'll lose them or you may not have them with you. These are pretty universal. Using one of these, you can plug it into things like a Chromebook, an Apple MacBook, or any of the number of devices that you use a standard USB-C type port. And now that you can finally go up to 60 watts, that means you can get rid of your charging brick for your laptop because this one outlet is able to not only power your laptop, it can charge the battery as well. Now my advice about ever buying electric products is to make sure you consider who you're getting it from. And currently the Leviton outlet is the only one on the market for the 60 watt size that has a real industry safety certification. They needed to perfect a design that could handle both the heat and give you the correct charging output. This is an entire band of metal on the outside. It's able to dissipate the heat and that means that the outlet will run cooler. They've already pre-attached three wires that you can connect to your electrical system. You've got a black which is your hot, white is neutral, and green is of course ground. Now installing one of these can be very easy. You can replace an existing outlet but you do want to be aware of one thing. Any type of outlet like this that's got a charging brick inside or even a GFCI is going to take more space inside your box than a regular outlet. Here the box that I'm going to install this outlet in was already removed and as you you can see it's just got a single wire. Your box may have two or even more wires in it and it may just be too small to fit one of these. You can replace it and you can get a model like this. These boxes are referred to as old work boxes. That just means that you can use these to retrofit existing boxes in your house and these come in different depths. Here is a standard depth box and when we put it next to an extra deep model you can see you get a lot more space to work. But this is a regular depth model I've got here on my wall and we're going to install it here without any additional modifications. Because I already removed my old outlet, I'm left with these loops. Now remember, you always want to make sure that your electricity is turned off before doing any work, and I've actually checked the leads to make sure they don't have any power. Now to make this easier, I'm going to straighten these wires out. They're in good condition, they're not beat up, so I don't have to trim them back at all. And I'm going to give you a bonus tip that is going to make this even easier. You'll notice that these wires are actually stranded. We usually use solid wire, and that's always what you're going to have inside your walls. So this creates a problem for making the connection. Connecting solid wire to stranded can sometimes be one of the worst situations you'll encounter. You could use a wire nut, but oftentimes they'll fail or you won't get the tension correct. A way better option is to use a Wago connector. Now I've shown these many times on my channel. These are perfect for connecting stranded to solid. The wire that they give you from Leviton is a little bit too long. So I'm going to trim this back just slightly and on the side of the Wago connector there's actually a strip gauge. That just means it tells you exactly how much conductor length you want to have exposed to to get the correct connection. And then just snap down the levers on the Wago connectors and your connections are instantly made. You'll also find that they're rock solid. Those stranded wires are not going to pull out the ends and you can verify this by flipping the connector over and because these models are transparent, these Wago 221s can show you that the wiring was done correctly. With your three wire connections made, all we've got to do is insert this back into the box. Now again, this is a big outlet, so you'll want to take your time to make sure that you kind of bend the wires around to get them to fit neatly inside the box. I often like to slightly attach two of the screws and then I can use the outlet itself to push the wires back. If you have any doubts that you haven't made this connection properly, just unscrew the outlet, take it back out, do a double check before you finally tighten those screws down. Now that this is installed, it basically looks like a regular outlet but this is also a tamper resistant model and I know all you guys hate tamper resistant outlets and so do I but this one has definitely gotten better. These guys have figured out the lever system inside and when you put a plug in here I don't seem to have to fight with it anymore like I used to. I'm also going to use this little fluke meter that I just showed you guys on my channel that can instantly test the outlet to make sure that my electrical power is correct. Two green lights mean that everything is working properly. Now we can go on to test out the USB connections. 
First, I'm gonna try plugging into this MacBook. Now, this is an easy test, but unfortunately, I can't monitor exactly how much power is going into the notebook. But there is one trick I've got. This cable has a small LCD display in it. It's able to show me how much power is going into the device, and it's getting around 37 to 40 watts. For this model MacBook, that is a regular amount of wattage that it would use, so things look like they're working pretty well. But I wanna see this thing putting out the full 60 watts. I'm gonna go ahead and use this EcoFlow River 2. Now, normally, you're using these to power other devices, and it does have a USB USB-C outlet rated for up to 100 watts. But this 100 watt port is bi-directional. That means it can output power and you can also charge this device. And within just a few moments, you can see that it's ramping up to about 57 watts. And if I look at the charging cable display itself, because the River 2 is probably using a little bit as overhead to charge the device. How much power do these chargers use when you're not even trying to charge a device? Are they gonna increase your electric bill? To get that answer, we've just gotta go over my test bench. Here I've put this ad hoc plug in the end. I don't recommend that you try this because they've got exposed wires and it's not really safe. But I'm gonna plug this into an external power meter and now I'm able to measure how much power this outlet is using. Now this isn't a smart charger but as you can see I'm already drawing about 8 watts of electricity so this meter is definitely working correctly and that's great news for this Lebanon outlet because this test shows that it does not consume any electricity without anything being plugged into it but you need to be aware that you can't get 60 watts out of both ports simultaneously. When you have two devices, it's typically gonna lower the output to 30 watts on each port. Now, as I mentioned, there were two other models that I found on Amazon before ordering this, and they are less expensive. This Lebanon model is just under $80. The other model that's been on Amazon for a little bit of time is made by this company called Amerisense US. The company name they have listed on Amazon, I can't even pronounce. I don't even know exactly what this is supposed to be. No one really cares about electric safety until your house burns down or you have something over overheat. Get one of these Lebanon outlets and get an outlet that's fully rated for 60 watts and is totally safe and tested. If you don't want to spend that much money, don't get a cheaper version of this outlet. I would recommend just getting a standalone charger. So two years ago, they said this couldn't even be made and now you can order one today. Now when you order one of these, you don't get the trim plate. Here I've got this red one, but it will fit any standard Decora style. Now USB chargers aren't necessarily the most exciting thing in the world, but if you're using your laptop charger every day, having a plug like this eliminates it. But let me know what you you think? Would you buy one of these outlets? Is this a good design? I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.